Today we're going to use Bazite to set up RetroArch and play old retro games like this. Without any further delay, let's get into it. We're going to head over to the website for RetroArch and this is if you're looking for Windows or a different distro for Linux. And what we're going to cover here is getting it manually, but then I'm going to show you also for anybody who's using Bazite to go into the bazaar and get that. After that, then everything else stays the same, setting up RetroArch inside the software itself. Once you have that downloaded, you can just double click it and run it as an EXE or an SH file if you're running a different Linux to install RetroArch. Now, if you're running Bazite, you can actually use the bazaar for this. So head into your bazaar, find RetroArch, and double click on it. You can confirm that it's got an updated version, and then you can go ahead and install by just clicking the install, and that'll be it. You'll now have an icon pop up in your games applications, and then we can just go in it from there. The next thing we have to do is head into RetroArch, and we're going to set up our UI. And I'm using XMB because it is the most familiar. I mean, it looks like PlayStation if you're familiar with it, and it sort of resembles Badosaire if you're used to that. So you can change that by going to your settings and then going down. And of all places to put it, it's in the drivers. So once you go into there, you can take a look at those. There's four other choices by default. It will start on Ozone, but you can select it with XMB. And then you exit the software or RetroArch, and then you can restart the game and it'll look like this. The next thing we have to do is head over to Load Cores. Here we're going to get some software that's going to make our emulators work. So we're going to download a core and if it doesn't pop in right away just back out and go again and it should show up. So there's a lot to choose from here. The best advice I can give you here is just to go online, check out which one is recommended and go find the ones that you need for the games that you have installed. In my case I'm looking for the Sega Dreamcast. So I'm going to double click on this and then it'll start downloading and then I've got the core. After that, we head over to Import Content. We're going to scan the directory. Now, the directory is the place that you have the ROM saved. So in my case, I have it on Desktop. And then in a folder called ROMs. We're going to scroll down until we select that. We're going to select our Dreamcast. And then we're going to scan this directory. Once we're done scanning the directory, it'll show up. And then we can back out and head all the way back over to take a look at the game, see if it is installed now. As you can see, there is no box art with it. Now, if we wanted to, we could click on it and play, but I'm going to show you how to install box art. So we're going to head back over to the main menu. We're going to go to Online Updater, and then we're going to scroll down to Playlist Thumbnails Updater. This will scrub the internet for your box arts. So each one that you have categorized different consoles, you're going to choose that and then it'll just go search out all the games that's in there. It'll grab any box art that it can, and then it'll automatically install it. So once that's good to go, we can hit Run, and then it will prompt you to choose which core you want. So you're going to choose the core you want, and it'll enter into the game. Now, if you want to exit the game and you're using a controller, you can hit the Start button and the Main button in the middle there and that will back it out or you can hit the escape key if you're using the keyboard. So we're going to back out of that and we're going to get one more thing before we can try out some of these games and that is getting the core system files. These include things like the BIOS or any other necessary files that an emulator may need. So we're going to head over to the main menu. We're going to scroll down to online updater and here you're going to find the core system files downloader. Once we go in, we're going to select any files that we need. Now in my case, I need the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation Portable. So I'm going to download those ones and then we're going to head over and get those up and going. Alright, I have to come clean. Because while I've gotten the other consoles to work, I can't seem to get PlayStation 2 to work. And I know it has something to do with the BIOS. The only problem is, I can't get to the BIOS in Bazite. Now I can do it in Windows and I can get it going there. But the problem is I can't seem to get to the hidden file section. And this could be one of the pitfalls to using Linux for this, specifically Bazite, because I can't get into the... I know the folder and I know where I want to get to. I can't get to it. Now I can get through it through this option. 
And so I've been able to get all these to work, but I can't seem to get to this section right here. And I know it's something to do with the BIOS. And so I've been online and I've been checking out different forums and different videos just trying to get this to work. But at this point, I'm spinning my tires and I can't seem to get PlayStation to work or PlayStation 2 to work. But I have to come to you guys and ask, has anybody encountered this issue with the PlayStation 2 on RetroArch? And if so, could you drop a fix in the comments below just to help everybody else out on getting this part fixed? Because I could find it, there has been fixes for Windows, but again, I just can't seem to do it because I can't manually go into the proper files in Linux. And and so I'm just going to show some of the display or I'm going to show some of the things here, take a look at it, and then next I'm going to go try out some games that are working. Firing up the Sega, we can play Golden Axe 2 with no problems. Runs perfectly fine on this old machine, which is an i7-4770 with an RX 550. And works perfectly fine. Getting good frames, no lags, no spikes. I played it for a little bit here and it was doing pretty good. So the next one that we're going to see is another old beloved console, which is the Super Nintendo. And we're trying out the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And again, for any of you retro fans out there, you may remember this title. And runs perfectly fine. Feels good, responsive, doesn't have any issues. And again, worked and played right off the bat. No, no major issues on trying to uninstall or anything like what I encountered with the PlayStation 2. And it just all ran smoothly and straight off into the, to the game. Stepping up a little higher, we got into GameCube here and playing Soul Calibur 2. Feels fine, worked right out of the gate, and it was uh, doing quite well. So, played through a few rounds here and just tested that out, and it did all, all right. Next we had the Dreamcast, and again, played perfectly fine, did good. Frames are great, and there just wasn't any issues again. So everything just started up and off it went. Get ready! And then for the final, while the PlayStation 2 didn't work, the portable PlayStation did. Had no problems pulling this up. Now, the limitations here, I think, are mostly due to the resolution that I chose. I didn't set any upscaling or anything. I didn't tweak any anything to change that to make it any better. So we're running on just straight up scaling and graphics that are on default with this. So you may want to tweak and alter some of those. So overall, not including the PlayStation 2 issue, having RetroArch on your desktop computer, in this case a Bazite computer, has been quite useful because it's not like my Batocer where it is only a Batocer computer. This I've been doing video editing, I've been doing different things, typical day-to-day -day use of a computer. It's been fairly easy to install, minus again the PlayStation 2. But again, if you have any fix, just leave it in the comment and then help a few people out there. Now, if you want to see other updates, I am also making a little bit of a larger series based around Bazite with this sort of build, as well as how to install Bazite on an old PC. Because as we all know, Windows 10 is coming to an end in the future, so that's something to think about if you have one of these old PCs kicking around. Now, if you found this video useful, like, subscribe, it goes a long way for helping on a little channel like this. So thank you and have a good day.